One of the frustrations for many pivot table users is the fact that the built-in grouping of dates into quarters and years in a pivot table always calculates results based on a calendar year. In other words, if your fiscal year was defined as the period from November of the current year through October of the following year, grouping dates by quarters would still result in totals that are calculated based on a calendar year. First quarter sales totals would include the months January through March rather than November through January, which of course aligns with your established fiscal year. You can manually create custom groupings to accommodate fiscal quarters and fiscal years, and this is a viable option for relatively small data sets, but if the data set spans multiple fiscal years, this can become a tedious and time-consuming task. As you will see in this tip, instead of manual custom groupings, you can use a formula-based approach to grouping pivot table data into fiscal reporting periods. Currently shown on the screen is a snippet of data for a company that operates on a fiscal year that runs from November 1st through October 31st. Also now shown on the screen is a pivot table based on that data. Now if we were to choose to use Excel's automatic grouping options, I could click on any date and then from the Analyze or Options tab of the ribbon, depending upon the version of Excel that you're running, I could choose Group Selection and choose to group this information by, for example, months, quarters, and years. And as many know, doing so will automatically group that information, but notice that the groupings are done based on calendar years, not fiscal years. As a workaround, for years, many have chosen to use a custom grouping option. That is, in this example, the months of February, March, and April would belong in this company's second fiscal quarter. So what we would do is exactly what I'm doing currently on screen, and that is highlight the three months that we want to group together, and then choose Group That Selection. And notice that Excel has now grouped that selection into something that it calls Group 1. Of course, I could type over that label and call that quarter two and repeat that process for each of the dates in this data set to create my fiscal quarter and fiscal groupings. As stated previously, the problem with that approach is that it could take an exceedingly long amount of time to complete the process. Instead, let's turn our attention to how we could complete this process much more quickly by using a formula-based approach. Currently presented on screen is the same data set that we looked at just a moment ago. However, there are two additional columns that have been added to this data set, column E and column F. These two columns have been added to assist with the process of grouping the information into fiscal quarters and fiscal years. Let's first examine the formula that exists in column E to help us to determine the appropriate fiscal quarter for the date shown in column A. This VLOOKUP formula extracts the month in cell A2, which in this example would be January or month number one. And then the VLOOKUP continues by searching for that month in the defined name called conversion, and when it finds the month, in this example, month number one, it brings back the value from the second column of the conversion defined name. Perhaps it would be helpful to take a look at the conversion defined name, which as you can see consists of cells J1 through K13 in the worksheet. Notice that the purpose of this table is to provide a mapping for the appropriate calendar month into its correct fiscal quarter. Returning to the VLOOKUP formula in cell E2, clearly what we would see is that looking up the value of 1, that is the month from cell A2, in the conversion table and bringing back the corresponding value from the second column would yield a fiscal quarter of 1. On the other hand, if the month extracted out of cell A2 was the calendar month of 5, or of course May, then the fiscal quarter would be 3. By entering this VLOOKUP formula in column E, we're able to very quickly and easily determine the fiscal quarter that the month belongs in. Additionally, a formula in column F is used to determine the appropriate fiscal year. As you can see, this formula examines the month 
from column A, and if that month is less than or equal to the value of 10, then we are assigning the fiscal year as the year extracted from column A. On the other hand, if the month is greater than 10, i.e. if it's 11 or 12, then the fiscal year would become the year extracted from column A plus a value of 1. With these modifications made to our data, we can now very quickly produce a pivot table that groups the information into the appropriate fiscal quarter and fiscal year. To do so, we'll insert the pivot table as we would normally do, and then we will drag the fiscal year and the fiscal quarter fields, which we created in our source data, onto the pivot table, along, of course, with the appropriate data that we want summarized in the pivot table. All that's left to complete this process is a little bit of formatting. For example, we see that the years have been formatted with commas. That would likely not be appropriate. So we'll change the format there to a general format and repeat that process for the other years. Additionally, if we desired, we could change the quarters from simple numerical representations of 1, 2, 3, and 4 to perhaps Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4. Lastly, we'll modify the alignment of those quarter labels and center those over the top of each column. While performing a manual custom grouping is a simple and straightforward means of creating fiscal period groupings for relatively small pivot tables, that method is likely too time consuming for larger pivot tables. In these cases, consider creating additional fields in the source data and using formulas to populate the fields with fiscal month, fiscal quarter, and or fiscal year data. Then you can simply add these newly created fields to the pivot table to get the fiscal period groupings you are seeking. On behalf of everyone at K2 Enterprises, thanks for taking time to watch this video tip. For more information on the training courses we offer, please visit our website at www.k2e.com.